Lesson 5, 6, Part B. Using matrices to solve systems, Part 2. Now, let's go ahead and take this matrix, matrix multiplication method and use it to solve a very practical problem. Tori has just won a million dollars from the lottery. Now, she does not want to work ever a day in her life. So she's going to use proper investing techniques to see if she can do it. All right, this is what she decides. She's talked to her financial advisors, etc., etc. She's going to put in part of her money in the stock market. Very, very conservative stocks. And they are going to average her based upon the last 10 to 20 years, an average of 8% annually. Now the rest of her million dollars, she's going to invest in certificates of deposit. Now, those are guaranteed funds. She can go to the bank and pull them out at any time with a slight penalty, um, but they will not fluctuate. They're gonna give her a constant 4% annually. So even though it's not quite as, as strong as the stock market, it's guaranteed. And the 8% can go up or down. This is just an average. Now, she has decided based on her car payment and her mortgage payment and food and utilities and, you know, fun and etc., that she needs to make $60,000 every year from these investments. Now, the question is, is this possible? Can this happen? And if it is possible, put in stocks and how much should she put in the more conservative but, but sure CDs. So all she needs to do is know a little bit of algebra and she can figure this out without paying an investment counselor thousands and thousands of dollars. She's just going to need to set up a system of equations. Okay? Now, she's going to have some money going into stocks. So we'll call that S. And she's going to have the rest of it going into CDs. So we'll call that C and the total that's going to be invested is a So there is the first sentence that we know is true about her money situation. Now, we know that the stocks are going to be bringing her eight cents on the dollar. That's what eight percent means. So she's going to make eight pennies on every single one of those S dollars in one year. And her certificates of deposit are going to be bringing her four cents on every dollar that she has invested. So eight pennies times S plus four pennies times C. She wants that all to add up to 60,000. And she wants this to happen over every year for the rest of her life so that she doesn't have to work for somebody else. She can do whatever she wants to and uh, she won't have to worry about feeding herself or clothing herself. So she's trying to invest her money wisely. All right, now how would this look as a matrix equation? Okay, well, let's go ahead and take a moment and pull our coefficients off. The coefficients on the S and the C are both 1. So it'll be a 1 and a 1. And then the coefficients on the second equation are 0 0.08 and 0 0.04. So there's your coefficient matrix. The point matrix is just S and C, amount in stocks compared to the amount in CDs. And the constant matrix is 1 million and 60,000. 1 million and 60,000. So now here we have a matrix form for the system of linear combinations up here. Now all we have to do to solve this is find the inverse of the coefficient matrix and multiply both sides on the left by the inverse of that matrix. First thing we have to do is see whether or not there is an inverse. So we're going to take A times D and from it subtract B times C. And as long as we don't get zero, we know this is a solvable system. Okay, so that times that would give us four one hundredths minus that times that, which gives us hundredths. Four one hundredths minus eight one hundredths is negative four one hundredths. So this is going to be a doable system with a determinant of negative four one hundredths. Okay, 
Now, let's see what the inverse would look like. All right, we've got to put negative 0 0.04, negative 0 0.04, negative 0 0.04, negative 0 0.04 in the denominators of all four elements here in this matrix. Now, remember, you go ahead back to the original and you switch the A and the D. So positive 4 one hundredths will go there and 1 will go here. And then you take the B and the C and you just write their opposites. So that will be negative 1 and this will be negative 8 hundredths. Now that is the inverse matrix of this. All right, so we will multiply that times the point matrix of S and C. Okay, now that's going to be equal to this times this. Now, this can be simplified because if we take 4 one hundredths divided by negative 4 one hundredths, we're going to get negative 1. And if we take negative 8 one hundredths and we divide it by negative 4 one hundredths, we're going to get positive 2. And over here, if you do this on your calculator, negative divided by a negative is a negative, and 4 one hundredths will go into 1 exactly 25 times. And here, same deal, except for this is going to be a negative 25. So, that is the inverse matrix in reduced form. And of course, we're going to take that now. So, that is the inverse matrix in reduced form. And of course, we're going to take that now times the constant matrix, which is 1 million and 60,000. Okay. Now, we'll go ahead and we will go across the row and down the column. And when we do that, we will get, oopsie, I just see here that I forgot to bring this down in here. Okay. That gets multiplied times that, which then gets multiplied times that. So the inverse times the original coefficient, the original coefficient matrix would give us the identity matrix. Okay, and we take the identity matrix times the S and the C, and that's going to be equal to what we get over here, which is going to be 100,000 and 500,000. So, 1S and 1C, S is equal K. She's going to have to put $500,000 in stocks, and she's going to have to put $500,000 in CDs as well. Now let's see, does that really work? Does that really give her $69,000? Or not 69, excuse me, does that really give her $60,000? Well, let's see, 500,000 at 8% is $40,000. And 500,000 at 4% is another $20,000. And 20 plus 40 does indeed give you 60,000.